restorative justice facilitator. Those two programs I mentioned, the victim offender conferencing and the retail theft, are restorative services that they, they include the victim. The victim has a voice and the offender is highly uh, accountable and takes responsibility for their action, not just to the courts, but specifically to the victim. Now, restorative justice comes in many forms, and restorative services, the timing on restorative services is different for every single case. And everybody's case or everybody's journey is very different. And I want to make it clear tonight that Jennifer Schilling's journey did not include any restorative services from the YWCA. So I, I don't want you to have that misconception. But I will point out that in your program, Jennifer's bio is in there that gives you just a little bit of background about her family's history and, and why she's here tonight. In there, it says that she did indeed go down to the Prairie du Chien uh, facility and speak to inmates down there last year. That is a restorative service that helps her heal and makes a huge impact on the inmates that were down there. Main programs. Um, Emily is a staff member in this department. She is our office assistant and extraordinaire. Um, we also have Tina Hinton, who is our excessive absence restorative, restorative justice facilitator. And that just, not just, that means that Tina works very closely with middle schools and high schools to pinpoint and target students who are excessively absent. And they uh, could be truant, they could be parents calling them in sick day after day after day. And Tina sits down with the parents, the school administrators, and the students and comes up with a, a mediated plan to get these kids into the school and stay there. And then Tina makes sure that they follow the plan. And they want to follow the plan for Tina. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> This program relies on donor donations and grants and, and making it what it is. 